Hi, this is Robbie with Techner Photography. I was at a wedding last weekend as a guest at an outdoor venue. No walls, nothing, just a total outdoor venue. And the professional photographer was running around. They had a professional camera with a speed light on the camera and they were using a Omnidome on top of the speed light. And that got me wondering what type of light an Omnidome actually will produce when there's no walls to reflect off of. So I wanted to conduct a little experiment using a speed light mounted on your camera to recreate an outdoor venue with no walls to bounce your light off of and cycle through a couple light modifiers. First using the speed light mounted on the camera firing directly at the subject which will be me and second we'll use the built-in little bounce card on the flash pointed up. Again, there's nothing to bounce off of, so most of this light will be wasted just firing straight into the sky. Some of it will be bouncing off the card at me. Next, we'll use an Omnidome, again, which will waste most of the light. I'll have it pointed up. So when you're using one of these, your flash output power has to go up substantially because it's shooting the light all around you, and only a fraction of the light is hitting the subject. So we'll see if that makes any difference because there's no walls to bounce off of. And I also have a little tiny speed light mounted uh, softbox that I got a long time ago. So I'll take various shots using these light modifiers without being able to reflect off of anything. So you're recreating the scenario when you are in an outdoor environment and all you have is your speed light on your camera. You don't really have any other choices. And then we'll take these into Lightroom and compare them. We'll see if these actually will make a difference. I know they do, or I know the Omnidome will when you're inside, you have walls to bounce off of, it creates a much softer light. But when you're outdoor and you don't, let's see if you need it or not. Let's go outside. Okay, so for our first flash, we're just gonna use the naked flash on the camera directed straight at me. And we'll see what that looks like. So that throws out a ton of light all over. Um, next, I'm going to use the built-in white card and we'll point the flash almost straight up, slightly pointed forward, and we'll see if that makes any difference. Now we're going to try the Omnidome, still pointed almost straight up, slightly forward. Omnidome is on, let's try this one. We'll try the Omni Dome one more time, point it slightly backwards, see if that makes any difference. And lastly, we're going to try this um, little softbox thing. So with the softbox thing, it's much darker. I'm not sure why you probably need to use flash exposure compensation plus maybe a full stop. So let's take these into Lightroom and see what they actually look like. So here are the shots we just took. Let's take a closer look. This is the flash pointed directly at the subject. You can see it's pushing out quite a bit of light. It illuminated the background, walls, subject. And there's the slightest bit of red eye just because when the flash is facing completely forward, it's closest to the lens, so you can potentially risk the uh, red eye effect. And you can see the shadow line on my jaw. The light is pretty harsh. It's not very soft. So next, this is the flash pointed almost straight up one notch forward with a built-in bounce card. I think this actually looks a lot better. Yeah, you can see these harshness in the shadows on the leaves, colors, everything looks a little bit better. These are directly from the camera with no modification. If we look at my eyes, they're not a hint of red. Shadow is still harsh, but not quite as bad. I like the light from this. And if compare back, color temperature is slightly different, probably because it's bouncing off of that white card. But that one's not too bad. So next we move to the Omnidome. And this one, because it's bouncing light in every direction, it illuminates everything. And it's not particularly that soft of a light. Just because of the size of the light source is tiny, 
So I, it's as soft as you can get, but it's not that soft. So that was with the Omnidome facing almost straight up, one notch forward. The next one, this one, I moved the Omnidome pointed almost backwards. It was one notch pointed backwards. And I like the light that this produced better than when it was pointed forward. It's not quite as bright in the background, which we don't really want anyway. The quality of light, something about it's just a little bit better. I like that. That was a good discovery. I've never tried that before, and I actually like it. My last shot was with my little softbox thing, and this thing consumed a ton of light. The TTL metering was not doing its job. I did two test shots, and it produced the same image. So it was underexposed by about a stop and a half. I had to raise this up, otherwise um, it was really dark. So that introduced a lot of extra noise and stuff. And the light isn't particularly that much softer. So my favorites from the two were the built-in bounce card and the Omdome facing backwards, surprisingly. So if we look at our shadows, the Omnidome facing backwards is a slightly softer light based on these leaf shadows. Based on that one, but this one's different. It's actually very similar. Yeah, it would be really difficult to tell the difference between the two. I think these two light sources are very similar. So the built-in bounce card seems to be like a really good option. I think that's what I'm going to start using. Or potentially the Omnidome facing backwards. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If there's some other type of speed light light modifier you use when the flash is on camera and you're outside, you can't bounce off anything, let me know. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.